for you here. I'm going to do a retrospective for 2020 now that I'm feeling better. Um, as you see uh, by this chart here, we have a whole bunch of interesting um, numbers to look at and interesting happenings. And the, the chart has gone off the rail. As soon as we hit this area under 20K um, and then broke through it, and then it's gone all the way above to the 40,000 range, um, you know, things have completely changed. And the way they've changed, let's, let's start going back into 2020. Because first we're going to start with where we came from and where we were. Well, we were short throughout 2019, and I was targeting all the way down to the under 5,000 range, and we had that move uh, with the pandemic, ironically enough. That was the most statistically prevalent thing that was to occur, and it did. All right, so cleared out of all the shorts that I had. Um, which were pretty immense back then. And as soon as it went under 5,000, I doubled my exposure in crypto. Not only did I double my exposure in crypto, I went, I became a silver bug. And I'll show you the chart to silver next on there. So um, we got the move down, covered all the shorts, and then went long, doubled my long exposure. So I, you know, doubled the amount I invested in Bitcoin on that under 5,000. I was telling everybody about it, and um, you know, it was a great buying opportunity, and it indeed was a great buying opportunity. Now, uh, the issue comes into play in towards uh, the fall of you know after summer of uh, we got the move back up, and we went up to all the way up to the twelve thousand range, and oh, that's great, you know, fantastic. Um, and then from here. I was going to look, you know, I was looking statistically at the numbers of what was likely to occur. You know, it's a raw market. This is a retail market. This is not an institutional market. Well, F that. You know, looking back at this, I should have paid more attention to the volumes as far as who was getting involved. Not um, just the, the trade. I, I would, I, I wish I could have seen the institutions like TD Ameritrade. Uh, PayPal, uh, MicroStrategy, and uh, Mass Mutual, all of these different institutional players came into this marketplace and they've totally, totally changed the dynamics of everything. Bitfinex is not as big of a play, you know, ha has uh, as much power as they once had. Grayscale has all the power and anybody, uh, uh, you know, there are large investors out there that have figured out the value proposition of Bitcoin ahead of time. <laughs> they were supposed to do this um, in the middle of 2021 and on 2022 and 2023, but they've done it way ahead of time. Um, and uh, I did not foresee that occurring. So anyway, the I, I went over and hedged my um, Bitcoin all the way up to the 17,000 range. And I don't lose anything because, you know, again, what a hedge is, is basically a one-to-one, -one especially, is you're locking in the value of your uh, my longs. So the longs that I bought all the way down here and and so forth, I locked into the value all, as it approached and went above uh, the 17,000 range. Great. But I missed this total move up here as it went all the way up to the 42,000 and mid 42,000 uh, level, which is insane. Um, it's done it way outside of its normal, you know. Uh, the one thing I did, you know, note is that I have this period of time between September all the way stretching out to February 3rd um, uh, of, you know, us uh, going higher. But these are algorithms that I use in the currency market, not for the raw retail market of crypto. But now that's changing. These institutions that come into here, they're going to use their math and their algorithms, which I trade perfectly well in the currency market and stocks and 
and other things. Um, so now the dynamics of the crypto has changed. And I'm going to see uh, how that plays out. I'm going to keep holding my hedge right now um, because February is coming. And this red block right here, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out and see what kind of down movement this extends all the way out for from February to July. So as uh, you know, we go into July, I will take it off and go 100% long. And I'm going to do it on a timing basis more than on a price basis, unless we get a move uh, for some strange reason all the way down to under 8,000, which, hey, anything is possible. But that's the, the play right there. Now let's go over and uh, so we're looking for a drop to occur from February to July. Um, uh, who knows the amount or the intent, the magnification of it. Now, if these institutions are in here, I get to also go over and look at the logic aspect. Um, I might close out trades if I see short-term opportunities and, and start taking the hedge off, let's say 10% at a time, um, based on uh, if I get patterns or uh, support and resistance or certain trades. So we'll see how that develops. But I, I'm possibly thinking that simply because of the fundamental shift. Uh, I mean, Bitcoin, when it's made its moves above uh, its all-time highs, it's gone 10 to 20 times on average uh, each time. So 10 to 20 times, uh, 10 uh, times uh, the 20,000 that it went last time, uh, which were back in uh, 2017 to 18, right? Um, would be, I don't have to tell you, it would be a few hundred grand and uh, you know and above so um will it uh do that this time well we're gonna see it shouldn't it, there are too many conflicting ways this can go so i'm caught between a rock and a hard place here because this has totally been shifted due to the the institutions coming in and i don't know uh, how this is going to play. Uh, if we get extreme volatility, we get a big shift down, that would be fantastic. Um, but uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, I'm basically just sticking with where I'm at right now. I'm just going to keep the hedge and there's nothing to really do. Uh, I've done very well throughout the year simply because I had a lot of really great trades, mainly silver uh, and um just the increase in my exposure. For example, we remember when silver dropped all the way down here and I said, JP Morgan is buying this. This is a total fraud. And it was. And, um, you know, so I got big into silver. And now there's a whole theme right here. Got big into silver and I got big into Bitcoin, right? It doubled my exposure and so forth. What does that tell you? I'm buying silver or metals silver and gold and Bitcoin and at that time and the, that tells me with the money printing that we had going on we're uh, close to one quarter of all the dollars in circulation this goes for euros and other currencies as well are being printed right it, well, let's stick with the U.S. dollar because that's the, the dollar of the world, uh, the petrodollar. Uh, we've done over close to one quarter of all the money that we have in circulation has been printed the last year. All right, so silver and Bitcoin are hedges against inflation. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be... Uh, instances of other countries where their currencies are just going to get totally, you know, messed up. And we'll, that, we'll probably hear that in the, the coming year. Uh, so anyway, we had this on silver. I told you about that and expecting a move that goes all the way up to here, up to the mid thirties. I exited half of my position around here expecting a move that could possibly go all the way back under 20 down to 19 of which I would add back that position. So that's my plan right there. That's still in play. Um, if not, I'm going to exit the rest of the, the position that I have at 
target above the 35. All right, so the theme right there is because of the money printing, and this is gonna go forward out into the future, and the effect of this when it starts to occur is you're gonna see it because you're gonna to go to the store and you're gonna notice, son of a bitch, my uh, Taco Bell that used to be a dollar per taco is now a dollar 49. Well, guess what? That already happened. And that kind of pissed me off because I love Taco Bell. But uh, that's occurred. And uh, what else has happened? You're going you're gonna to notice that uh, uh, car sales are going to be way down. And uh, people are selling, their, millionaires are selling their houses. Have you heard in the news that this guy or that guy and so forth? It's because they're being advised by smart people to start getting rid of <laughs> real estate. Um, because it's going to get clobbered. And um, so you're going to see that occur. And uh, it's going to be a shift. And it could be pretty ugly. Food prices are going to likely go up. Um, and a lot of people aren't prepared for any of this. And they're already hurting. So uh, uh, this, is gonna, this could get ugly. Um, governments are doing their best to go over and print their way out of this. But there's already so much debt and that's not going to really have the effect that you're going to be looking for. It's going to have a minimalized effect and the inflation effect is going to probably be pretty extreme. So being in something like silver or gold and um, Bitcoin is going to likely be a really positive aspect for the years to come in the future, um, especially Bitcoin and crypto. So we're in a kind of a good spot. But... You know, until July, I'm not going to flip completely uh, back to the uh, the long side. You know why? Um, all right, so let's look at some of the the wins that we've had throughout the year as well. Let's look at synthetics. Synthetics exploded. Uh, bought it in the four dollar range, averaged around four fifty, and um, it hit its target ahead of time in the upper 15, 200% of its zero to, you know, the price all the way up to the 740 level. So um, fantastic. Hit up here. Where do we go from here? Well, if you guys want to hold it for the moon, who knows where it can go? It could go anywhere from this point on. You know, a logical target would be that uh, 1577, 1580, somewhere around there. Yeah, great. Fantastic, good price. Uh, good target, hit it way ahead of time. Was not expecting this, um, but uh, the trade made sense and uh, you know, it, it uh, worked out. Now, we also had the really big trade that I really liked, which was Hex right here. You know, we're gonna take this off a weekly. It's not gonna make any sense. And this one hit target, it even broke out above its old high. This one was ridiculous. Love this trade. And here, let's break it down to even better. So this was uh, one easy to spot and super manipulated by whoever that guy is, Keith something or other, and uh, easy to spot had the signatures and the volume identifiers that I, I was looking for. Uh, and I'm looking for more trades like this because there's a lot of money in these manipulation trades. The only thing is some the volume is sketchy and um, you know if too many people get involved in it, it kind of messes up the dynamics of it. But so far this played out perfectly and I don't have to tell you percentage wise again, you know, just like the synthetics uh, who trade wrappers uh, using blockchain technology to trade stocks, you know, which that could cause them a problem in the future because, you know, people from the exchanges are going to be, why are they trading stocks? You're taking my business, you know, but we'll see. Um, they, they don't even know about it yet. Just like the, the, the regulators don't know anything about uh, BNB, uh, the token, which uh, basically works along the same dynamics as XRP, which basically means that, uh, Binance USA or Binance should be attacked by the SEC next. Won't get into that. Um, we hit target on this one. This was a great trade. Uh, the other one, 
hit it both on Ethereum and you know you can see on a percentage basis that there are just fantastic um, uh, returns. So I am going to be looking for more trades like this in the marketplace because uh, a lot of other things are just kind of boring. We did have the recent trade of XRP of which I have to go over and go to uh, do an intermission and uh, show that separately, which I'll do in a minute. All right, here's the XRP trade. X to A it trades back to it and it goes even under. I average into this trade uh, on its declines, uh, getting in, in the mid uh, point 26 cent range and targeting above 37 cents. I, I made it a close, uh, what, around 40% on 75% of the position. Uh, exited above that X point. Um, and um, then the last 25% I had to exit again because I was being threatened that we're gonna, you know, no longer trade this on Coinbase. So I exited the last 25%. So, I mean, it was a good trade. I'm kind of pissed at it because of the fact that, you know, my government basically forced me out of a position. It's complete stupidity with the SEC. I don't even want to discuss that. It just uh, pisses me off. I don't know what to say. All right. So anyway, I'm going to end this video here. I'm going to make another video during the week. You know what? I'm going to try some new stuff, some new interesting stuff. And I have to also talk to the new owners of uh, VCT and decide what we're going to do. But I was thinking of going through some of his trades and showing the technicals of them from my perspective, as well as, because uh, he has a lot of good trade ideas. Why not collaborate in a, in a way? So anyway, uh, I'll come back during the week and I'll see where we stand and what we're going to do going forward. Uh, and I'll close this video out early. It's already long enough. It's almost like 18 minutes, so I've talked long enough, and I'm tired now. <laughs> you know, being sick for the whole week has really sucked, let me tell you. Uh, this was something else. It was a real mf -er, is all I'm going to say. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm over it. I'm feeling much better. Um, thank you for your nice replies, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great week.